Before we begin this video, I just want to thank you guys so much for 300 subscribers. As of recording this video, I have 347 subscribers, which is absolutely insane to me. So I just want to thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I have a lot of awesome plans for this channel as well as content that's coming out. So definitely check them out if you guys have the time. Let's get right into this video. In the last episode, we upgraded all of our equipment to 6% dex as well as learning ways to optimize our damage and where to even find bonus damage. In this episode, we will be taking on Chaos Root Abyss. I'm super excited for this, so let's get right into it. It's Apple Seed! For the next few days, I continued doing my dailies to progress to level 220. Just by doing my daily missions as well as the Ignition minigames, I'm able to reach at least one level a day, which is really great at this level bracket. As I'm funding my bossing meals, I like to take things slow rather than leveling as quickly as possible. That way, on my journey to level 220, I'm slowly progressing and leveling my arcane symbols to gain higher stats. Arcane symbols are just a great way to gain stats without spending a lot of misos. I wasn't filming this unfortunately, but as I defeated normal Arcarium, I actually obtained a Dominator's Pendant. It is scientifically proven that mules never struggle. Of course, I went ahead and upgraded it. I was able to achieve 12 stars as well as 6% dex. I was also able to take advantage of the ongoing events that's been giving out free flames, so I took that to my advantage and I flamed all my items. I was able to hit 7k dex. From having completed Blake's alphabet event, I was able to obtain the android as well as the Kerning Tower android heart. I went ahead, starforced it, and cubed it. I hit 6%, which is pretty good for now. I continued doing my daily missions and progressing the next few days and was able to hit level 215. I cannot stress it enough that this event is overpowered for leveling. Now that we're level 215, we're gonna start preparing for Chaos Root Abyss. The first thing that I did was spend my ignition coins buying 100 arcane symbols for Vanishing Journey and Choo Choo Island. This allowed me to level my arcane symbols all the way to up to level 9 and 6 which boosted my stat up to 7.4k. The next thing that I did was reconfigure my Legion and Link skills to better fit for bossing. I also went ahead and bought 4 buff freezers. If you've been following this series, then you know that in the last episode, I showed you how to get bonus damage. I'm also including the Legion's luck this time, just so I can get a better drop rate from bosses. And now we're gonna buff up and prepare to fight our first Chaos Root Abyss boss. After buffing up, I'm almost at 8k stat, which is just more than enough to beat Chaos Root Abyss. I'm feeling very confident. And with that being said, we will fight our first boss, Chaos Bonbon. Bon. So Chaos Bonbon bon is actually kind of difficult in my opinion, only because he just moves way too much, right? And with a lot of the skills being very flashy nowadays in MapleStory, it's very hard to see what's going on, especially when you're fighting a boss. So I recommend turning your transparency down. In the first phase, Von Bon will do two things. He'll either slap you when you're standing right in front of him, or he'll charge up and throw a ball at you. When he throws the ball at you, you'll see this animation. All you really have to do to dodge it is either stand and jump right behind him, or duck. When you lower Von Bon's health to around 2 thirds, he'll start doing a jump attack. When this happens, make sure you jump off the ground. You'll also receive a message that says a crack has appeared in the temporal crevice. When this happens, enter the map and unalive the fake Von Bon to reappear in the original map. Bonbon bon will also occasionally summon a shadow clone of you, where after a few seconds you'll teleport to that position. It's not that big of a deal, but when you are getting mid teleported and he throws a ball at you, you can just hold the down key to automatically dodge the ball since the game will register that you are crouching. Once Bonbon bon reaches about less than one third of health, he'll start going into his bird form, where he spreads his wings and knocks you back. This is an issue because there will be projectiles falling down from the sky at this point of the fight, and so if you get knocked into one of the projectiles, you will take damage. The big projectile will one-hit KO you, so watch out for that. He'll also continue throwing his ball at you. And just like that, we were able to defeat Chaos Von Von. Not too bad. Now we will be taking on the Chaos Crimson Queen.
Upon entering the Chaos Crimson Queen boss fight, she will be in her first phase, the angry phase. In this phase, she will charge up a flame attack which can one hit KO you, so make sure you dodge it. If you get attacked by her, she will also blind you. She will summon a flame that appears under your character which will burn you. Make sure you are constantly using your potions because if not, it will drain your HP down to zero and you will be unalive. The next phase is the winking phase. You'll know this because she'll say I'll be your opponent at the top of the screen. She will also summon this mirror which you have to crack otherwise you'll get sucked into it and it will one hit KO you. In this phase, she will also summon hearts that explode. Make sure you don't get hit by them because they deal a lot of damage. The next phase is the bleeding tears phase. You'll know this because she'll say feel my pain at the top of the screen. She will also surround herself in this red bubble so make sure you don't attack her because if you do you will take damage. She will also use this zombie debuff on you where you cannot use potions otherwise you take damage. Her fourth and last phase, she will say I will destroy you all. This is her smiling face. She will summon a hole on the ground which will deal damage to you as well as suck you in using her attack. If you get attacked by her claws, it will apply reverse keys on you meaning the way you move will be reversed. In my opinion, Chaos Queen is the easiest Chaos Root Abyss boss because a lot of her attacks are extremely predictable and easy to overcome. Also, she's very stationary which means Wind Archers just obliterate her with their burst and tornado. I do want to mention that if you do not have a bind in your class, you're going to need Erda Nova for this. Chaos Peer is extremely annoying because of his mechanics which I'll explain, so make sure you have a bind with you. With that being said, let's take on Chaos Peer. <laughs> Chaos Peer has the lowest HP amongst the Chaos Root Abyss bosses, but that does not mean that he is easy by any means. He is actually, in my opinion, the hardest Chaos Root Abyss boss purely because of his hat switching mechanic. Basically what happens is, he'll switch hats with you, meaning if you're wearing a blue hat and he's wearing a red hat, you'll do double damage. Whereas if you're wearing the same color hat that he is, let's say you're wearing the red hat and he's wearing the red hat, he will actually heal from your attacks. During your fight with Chaos Peer, occasionally there will be hats that rain down from the sky. If you get attacked by the hat, you will have to button mash your way out of it, otherwise you will get one hit KO. In this scenario, Chaos Peer switched to his blue hat and I was wearing the red hat meaning I now do double my damage. In his blue hat form, he will spin around in a circle and chase after you. If you get hit by him, he will lock you. If you stand in his flame, you'll take damage occasionally, but it's not a lot of damage, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you are wearing the same color hat as him, I would just run around the map and wait till he switches back to the purple hat, in which case you'll attack and then he'll switch hats again. The reason why this boss fight is so annoying is because it's all based on RNG. You never know what color hat you're going to get, and so in some cases, you'll get the same color hat as Chaos Peer back to back, prolonging the fight longer than it needs to be, even if you're strong enough to defeat him. Now, when Chaos Peer transforms into his red hat, he will occasionally teleport and attack you in the previous position that you were standing in. This is a very easy attack to dodge, but if you don't dodge it, you'll get one hit KO. When Chaos Peer's HP is lower than one third, he will split into two. This makes the fight extremely difficult because he will be wearing both hats at the same time. One clone will be wearing the red hat and the other one will be wearing the blue. This makes it extremely difficult because you will only be wearing one color hat. So the strategy that I like to do is I like to lower his HP to a little over one third and then I like to bind him and then burst and then hope for the best. That usually defeats him and that's what makes this fight a lot easier than splitting. And now onto the final battle, Chaos Vellum. So Chaos Vellum is going to take a little bit of practice because there's a lot of things going on. The first thing to note is that when a yellow circle appears on the ground, he will either stick his head out or his claws will appear. If you get attacked by his claws, you will be one hit KO. The first phase of his attack is when he sticks his head out long wise, he will start breathing fire and he'll shoot three fireballs down. You do not want to be in range of it because you will be one hit KO. In addition to him spitting fire out, he will also shoot out claws. 
make sure you are not standing on top of the yellow circles as that is happening or else you'll also be one hit KO. When Vellum's HP is about two thirds, he'll also go into a second attack mode where he splits green slime from the sky as well as shooting his claws up from the ground. You'll know he's doing this because his head is not long, it's a little bit in the middle. Vellum's third attack, you'll see this huge yellow circle appear on the ground. Make sure you're not standing under it because he will one hit KO you. This attack is very easy to dodge, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you haven't seen Vellum in a while, that means Vellum is taking a deep breath. You'll either need to run to the left or the right end of the map. A great tip is that if Vellum is inflicted with status inflictions, they will appear on the ground, so you can tell right away if he's gonna either be on the right or the left side of the map. If you're unsure, just run for your life. Chaos Vellum does take a lot of practice, especially for beginners, and so if you're not getting it in the beginning, just keep practicing because eventually you'll be able to defeat Vellum with no problem. And with that being said, we were able to defeat Chaos Vellum, which means we've officially defeated all of the Chaos Rutabis bosses. We have just achieved a very important milestone in our journey to defeating Lotus and Damien. We were able to make about 350 mil after selling the boss crystals and we're opening up our rewards now. Opening up the pieces that we've gotten from the boss drops, we're able to now have our full Chaos Rutabis set, except for the weapon. Chaos Vellum needs to be defeated at least twice in order to collect enough pieces to unlock the weapon. That's okay because we'll just defeat Chaos Rutabis again next week in order to complete the full set. In the meantime, I'm upgrading the Chaos Rutabis equipment that I was able to achieve, which is the hat, the top, and the bottom. After all of the upgrades and equipping my new armor, I now have 8k decks which is perfect because now we are making very great progression and we are ready to tackle on more bosses. And that wraps up this episode. We were able to get to level 215 as well as defeating Chaos Root Abyss and reaching the next milestone in our bossing meal journey. We've collected the Chaos Root Abyss top, bottom, and the hat. Next week, we will be completing the full Chaos Root Abyss set as well as taking on more and more bosses. Stay tuned.